This video has been a long time coming. It's a game that's eluded me for so many years that I wasn't even sure it was real. This is Rita-Rama, developed by Selena Studios and distributed by Maxis in 1995, supposedly. As an avid fan of the company, I own every single product catalog they ever released, to my knowledge, and not a single time does Rita-Rama or Selena Software even get so much as mentioned in passing. And online research hasn't helped much either, because other than a handful of expired sales listings and an unhelpfully vague library catalog entry, the only evidence I can find that maybe this thing happened is on page 3 of the resume for actor Lonnie Manella. According to this, she did voice acting for the game, but that still doesn't tell me much, and that sucks. This seems like a game with some stories to tell. Everything about it just seems fishy. The oversized Maxis logo, the quotes saying how great it is without ever mentioning it by name, and of course, this absurd box art, which is easily some of the worst I have ever laid eyes on. But due to a viewer letting me know about this shrink-wrapped copy for $20 on eBay, and I finally have a complete copy. So let's go ahead and tear into this mystery once and for all and... what? Where's the game? Ah, as if this couldn't get any stranger, after years of searching, all I get is a registration card. Talk about vaporware. Okay, so not all is lost because I found another eBay listing for the disc on its own. And not only that, but it came with Spellarama, which is another elusive Selena Studios game that's even harder to research. But yeah, now that I have both of these discs, it's finally time to dive into them and see what's up. Assuming they don't explode on use or erase my brain or something. Thankfully, neither happened, but the strangeness did its best to continue. Not only did it fail to detect my Windows 98 computer's RAM, but the errors referred to the program as Chugalong. I assume this was an earlier thing it was based on, possibly a game called Chugalong's Phonics that Lonnie Manella also is credited on. On the quest for more info, I checked the install directory, and uh, the installer didn't install a single thing whatsoever. Seriously, other than placing some icons in the start menu, all it did was place a blank folder on the C drive. And yeah, digging through the documentation on the disk, once again, is no real help. Selena Studios used an AOL email address, an anonymous P.O. box in Las Vegas, and doesn't credit anyone by name. Heck, the most information-filled document it comes with is a gigantic list of computer hardware manufacturers' contact information. And of course, once it started up the game, it wouldn't run. So I booted up a Windows 3.1 setup, and while it didn't show any icons in the program manager, it did at least play. So finally, at long last, this is Rita Rama. So yeah, this just keeps going. For 2 minutes and 23 seconds, I kid you not. This so-called animation running at 3 FPS goes on for so long that it triggered my screensaver halfway through. But then it's finally done and well, just watch. You know, something tells me we're in for some ridiculously embarrassing stereotypes after that kind of intro. Yep. Hi there. I got a problem. Will you help? I'm mortified. I mean, a big guy like me. And they give me this perfume bottle to live in. Oh, God. You know, I was hoping the box art would just be a bad representation of what the game was like, but nope. It is 110% flawless in that regard. So, anyway, after selecting your difficulty, you're told you have to help this genie find his lamp since he's living in a perfume container and is getting a headache. Yeah, me and you both, buddy. Rita-Rama is laid out like a board game, and you spend this wheel to move the genie around the board in search of his lamp. What happens when you land on each space, though, is truly inspiring. Thunder Drama is my name. Making noise is my game. Dude. I mean, I probably shouldn't expect any better from a game that starts with a two and a half minute wank session over its own logo, but this is the kind of awfulness that has to be savored when you come across it. Have my drum so loud and clear, so you can make your journey without any fear of noise.
So yeah, each spot on the board brings you to something pretty equally crap, with names like Rainbow Girl, Lightning Dude, and of course, Thunder Drummer here. And well, I guess this is the educational portion of the game, because it has you spelling, unscrambling, and matching various words to their pictures. So it got the read part of its name down, but I'm still waiting for the Arama to come into play. And I'm not going to spend any more time explaining this board game mode, because there's literally nothing more to explain. Once you reach the end, it's time to confront this delightful fellow. More. More. Give me more. Man, is this game off-putting. And what the heck, why is everyone always going on about how tired they are? I'm so tired. Oh boy, I'm beat. Oh, sleepy. But I'm not tired. Whatever, once this giant goes to sleep, you have to rustle around his abode in search of the genie's lamp. Clicking on things plays an animation that no one cares about, and eventually one of the items will contain the lamp. Or the pieces, or whatever. And so finally, you put together a picture of the lamp while the giant disgustingly snores right into your eardrums. <laughs> Great! Thanks so much! Would you like to play again? No! Alright, so I have to try Spellorama now, because at least it has icons. After the same unbelievably long intro that I can't believe they've used for each of their games, you're greeted with these highly marketable characters. What do you know? I got that promotion I've been after for so long now! <laughs> oh, let me take a peek at my lovely image. You're doing, Lady Flyers! Shouldn't be allowed in the air! Ah, uh, yes. Nothing like a bit of casual woman bashing to spice up a kid's educational game. Anyway, the stupid fly has lost his stupid keys to his stupid New York City business or whatever, so it's up to you to go down to the sewers to find it. Yeah, this, that's where this game belongs, so I'm glad it's going there. And from here, you have to navigate a maze, and along the way, you run into more people that are dead tired because that seems to be the only trait they could come up with. After this, I have no idea what happens, because the game refused to go any further and just made fart sounds at me no matter what I did. I tried for about 10 minutes before giving up, but hey, if you want to give it a go yourself, I've provided links to both this and Rita-Rama in the video description. Not that I recommend disgracing your computer with the mere digital presence of these pieces of sh**, but you know, in the interest of software preservation, I'm just putting it out there. Read and spell Arama are off-putting, barely educational, and downright bizarre, but not in a way that's enjoyable. I was almost hoping for another Ninja Nanny-like experience, but it's not nearly unhinged and surreal enough to be appealing in the same way. Nope, their relative obscurity is all these games have going for them, and I can see why Max has never promoted them or even said they had them for sale. Honestly, I'm still not 100% convinced that Max has had anything to do with these abominations, and maybe Selena Studios or whoever just slapped their logo on the box for name recognition. And if you think that's a far-fetched accusation, I've seen weirder. Just take a look at Jazz Jackrabbit's Poker Broker. That exists. <sighs> anyway, I've wasted enough of my time and yours with this, but I hope you still enjoyed Edutainment Month 2017, and I'll see you next time. And if you enjoyed this video of this crap, I've covered some weird things in LGR, so, you know, stick around if you like that kind of whatever I'm doing. And as always, thank you very much for, th you know, uh, my brain scrambled. I can't. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna leave. I'm done.